religious sect and others laundering money for terrorists. The FCC had earlier mentioned that uh, during the course of investigation, they traced a religious sect indulging in this criminal activity. And while warning those criminals, the CSOs say if the EFCC had done its investigation and identified the religious group, then there was no need to hide its identity. Joining us now uh, in the studio for this conversation is lawyer, is also a social development advocate, Olutuboswa Shifuura. We also have joining us via Zoom from the United Kingdom, lawyer and public affairs analyst, Daniel Boala. Gentlemen, uh, thank you for joining us. Mr. Boala, Mr. Shifuura in the good studio. Morning. It's good to have you join thank us. You. Uh, let's begin uh, from Zoom. Uh, Daniel Boala joining us, uh, you know, from the United Kingdom. What are your thoughts on this issue? It has, um, you know, raised up a lot of uh, reactions. But what do you think, really, about this revelation by the EFCC? Well, uh, thank you for having me, and good morning to your viewers. I think it's a, a long time coming, because I recall that... Um, some few years ago, two or three years ago, when uh, the government of the United Arab Emirates uh, made a disclosure of uh, individuals and corporate bodies that were involved in terrorism financing, uh, they did what they had to do at their end, and they submitted names of Nigerians who were involved. And I think there were about um, either six or eight Nigerians involved in terrorism financing. And they made the recommendation, but uh, we have not actually seen or heard any decision that the government has taken in terms of uh, uh, prosecuting them or even doing a further investigation to bring this fact to the Nigerian people as to whether the government believed or whether the government acted on the intelligence that was shared by the government of the United Arab Emirates. And I think that this is one of the reasons why, if you look around the country, you will see that there are lots of terrorism-related activities that are going unchecked. Because even this kidnapping that you're seeing is captured in Section 24, I think, of the Terrorism and Prevention Act. And it is quite clear that act of kidnapping constitutes terrorism. And the punishment is that if in the process of kidnapping, so you, somebody's life is lost, then the, uh, the, the accused is going to be uh, sentenced to death. But if the person hasn't, has not been killed or somebody has not died as a result of the kidnapping or hostage taking, then it will amount to, I think, to result in 24 years or so. We have not seen any of these actions by the law enforcement agency. So it has emboldened people to be involved in terrorism-related offenses, which now uh, kidnapping has been captured.